to Nova Scotia, where researchers have come up with an ambitious new plan for detecting the coronavirus. They're developing a public health tool that could live on even after the pandemic is under control. Brett Ruskin has been looking into that, and he's in Halifax live. Good morning, Brett. What is this new technique? What and are they talking morning, about? Heather. Yeah, this new technique has to do with testing wastewater. So that's everything we flush, everything, all the toothpaste we spit out and go down the drain. Uh, and so what researchers are doing, they are using a, a specific kind of, of ball that they have created to go down and test the sewage that comes out of specific buildings or neighborhoods. Here, take a look. Here is one of the front lines in the fight to track COVID-19. Everything we flush ends up at treatment plants like this. Here in Halifax and a few other Canadian cities, devices like this sample the city's flow searching for the coronavirus. It gives an indication at a population level. But Dr. Graham Gagnon from Dalhousie University wanted a more precise picture. Could you test neighborhoods, even individual buildings? The humanitarian in me wants to say, hopefully we don't find it. But the scientist in me says, let's, let's hope this works and we we're able to detect it. Here's how they plan to do it. Dr. Gagnon got grad student Emily Hayes to design a ball they could lower down into a manhole. I'm not sure if you've been to many manholes before, but they're, they're not glamorous. Um, but it, it's exactly what you might think it would be. We um, hang it on its line, uh, we deploy it down into uh, the flow of the water, and then we come back and we get it. Dr. Crystal Sweeney says the balls are 3D printed, making them easy to replicate and less expensive than swab testing. The method of testing pooled samples is much cheaper, um, very economical, especially when you have, you know, uh, simple devices like this. This is the Northwood Care Home, and 81% of all of the province's COVID-related deaths have happened here. Now, staff and residents are currently being vaccinated, should be done by the end of this month, but afterwards, in theory, the researchers with that ball could pop it down in the sewer as a way to verify the effectiveness of the vaccine and have another early warning sign if COVID should come back. Balls like this won't replace the accuracy of individual swab tests, but it could offer another layer of protection even after the pandemic. We could just do this as a monitoring program that could go, you know, on a regularized basis. And now this program is getting some help from Research Nova Scotia. About $800,000 is going uh, from that organization to the researchers here to, to help them kind of develop this strategy and expand it uh, across the province. Heather. I mean, we're all really intrigued by this, Brett. And as you said, 3D manufacturing, 3D printer use means pretty simple. Could they use it, do you think, in other places? Yeah, so this is basically uh, something that they are, are, you know, developing here in Halifax, but they're actually going to uh, implement it and use it elsewhere in other uh, major, you know, population centers in the province. So up at Cape Breton University, up on, uh, in Cape Breton, you have uh, St. FX, St. Francis Xavier University in Antigonish, uh, Acadia University, in places where there's lots of folks who are living, but also you have uh, some laboratories where you can actually do the tests and some researchers who can uh, implement it and do this testing and also most likely a 3D printer to print these balls. So uh, when it's all said and done, I mentioned that $800,000 fund, when this is kind of fully implemented with these balls popped down those pipes, most of the population of Nova Scotia is going to be monitored in some way or another, depending on where you're living, uh, by these sewer balls that they have developed. So it's really interesting just how, how widespread, how flexible, how economical this new strategy is developed right here in Nova Scotia. Absolutely. Brett, thank you.